This week, smoking killed more people than tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and COVID combined. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape. 15 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 25th of June, 2021. Yeah, you heard that right. This week, it's a 15 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report, because the floodgates have opened. With the United States taking down three dozen Iranian websites, including Press TV, the misinformation war mustered all internet resources and curbed Google's ability to sculpt vaping news. This week, I have so much vaping news from around the world that I can't even list them all in the description below. Sorry, guys, but the truth is filled with nuances. And with a picture being worth a thousand words, I'm here to tell you, it's going to take way more than five pictures to summarize the news this week. I've got vaping studies you never heard of. I've got the first Russian case of a volley and another one in Lexington, Kentucky. I've got Bloomberg meddling in developing countries and the adverse consequences of his and the Gates Foundation global tobacco control efforts. You see, you can't go from 900,000 deaths per year to 1.3 million deaths per year and not have somebody realize that it's their lobbying efforts that cause the increased death rates. But more on that later, because I also have vape devices catching on fire and a public service announcement for all you vapors. We've also got the U.S. Customs and Border Protection intercepting Rick and Morty counterfeit vape pens. And soon, all of Europe will be dealing with the customs inspections of every single package not originating in the EU. I've also got a Montrealer fined for vaping while driving and the consequences of Canada's flavor ban. There's also vaping news from the United Arab Emirates, Germany, the Netherlands, and why a Dutch flavor ban is going to drive 260,000 vapors back to smoking. Congratulations, philanthropists and politicians. Your meddling in things beyond your control has decimated all hope in achieving a tobacco-free society. Because you fail to recognize the difference between combustion and non-combustion. Just like how all the reporters fail to differentiate between nicotine vaping and marijuana vaping. And speaking of cannabis, I also have a New Zealand medicinal cannabinoids information website. Because I cannot in good conscience advocate for the medical benefits of nicotine use without also admitting that there's medicinal benefits of cannabis use. There are legitimate reasons why people need to have their cannabis. And that'll bring us to an Italian study adding to the mounds of scientific proof that people need better living through chemistry. Yet despite this fact, local governments continue to ban these products or at least ban the use of these products on public property. From Ashbury Park, New Jersey, or Washington, D.C., or Johnson City, Tennessee, or San Diego, California, and even in Australia, minor concessions that were made at the state and federal level are now being turned into bans on public use of harm reduction products. Simply because ants can't believe that breathing in flavored air is no different than breathing in polluted air that surrounds all of us each and every single day. I mean, even the Queensland chief health officer focuses their attention on the 2% of kids using zero milligram vapes instead of focusing on the 11% of their Australians who smoke daily. Forget that the adolescent smoking rate is less than 5% because of these air products. Focus only on the fact that breathing in flavored air is not 100% safe. Hey, moron! The analog smoking and combustion, that is the enemy. 
Why are you sending friendly fire on the products that are extinguishing combustion? Do you not understand that one in four children live with a daily smoker of combustible tobacco? Do you not understand that science has shown that never smokers who vape have no detectable differences in their lungs from never smokers who never vaped? Obviously not. Just like how the German Federal Ministry of Finance has no interest in how many people are going to die because of their disproportionate tax hike. Four cents per milligram of nicotine versus 15 cents for an entire pack of analog cigarettes. Before VAT, that's 29 euros of tax on a six milligram, 120 mil bottle of e-liquid, but only 1.5 euros on a full carton of analog cigarettes. And speaking of VAT, have you heard about the EU customs changes? Starting the same day as Germany's new taxes, but a year earlier. Shit, that's next week. Anyway, starting July 1st, all shipments to the EU are going to be subject to customs inspections of every single package for the purposes of assessing VAT. No more samples being exempt from VAT. No more de minimis thresholds allowing goods less than 22 euros from being taxed. Every single item, regardless of cost, must have a VAT applied to that product. And all packages are going to be inspected to determine what that VAT payment is going to be. And it has to be paid before delivery of that package. So, if you order a one euro bag of, let's say, oh, I don't know, silicone rings to protect the glass on your atomizer, well, now it's gonna have a customs inspection fee added and assessed by the customs opening your package before the post office or whoever was going to deliver it to you. So cough up the cash, punk. We don't care that the value added tax makes your item not worth ordering. So maybe you ought to like, you know, go to the local shop and buy it there so that the VAT can be distributed across hundreds or even thousands of products. Who cares if everyone has to pay more? We need our tax money. Moving on to Malaysia, where Relics International has just launched the Relics Pledge to focus on the protection of miners, consumers, and economic livelihoods. Actually, Relics isn't focusing their efforts just in Malaysia, but internationally, as they contemplate introducing this brand new technology solution that pre-locks their device and only allows adults to unlock them. Sounds more like an anti-counterfeit protection scheme than it does a use prevention method, but okay. I've also got four things to know about vape coils as a prerequisite to vaping and three rare side effects of cannabis consumption. Lastly, China is facing international isolation. Well, if they don't comply with the U.S. demands. I mean, what's next? Is the U.S. going to monitor and block internet communications for China like they did Iran? Or are they doing that already with vaping and every other topic under the sun just to shape public ideology? Regardless of what tinfoil hat accusations are going to be made, the consequences of vaping prohibition and the subsequent resulting black market deaths are irrefutable. Just like in New York, where Monarchy and Cuomo prides himself for making his state the most expensive cigarette prices in the nation, but then ignores how this has resulted in New York being the number one state for black market products. When a product is overregulated and overtaxed, the purchasers of these products are not going to stop wanting their products simply because you made them illegal or you made them too expensive with your taxes. If you live in New York or anywhere else in the, in the world for that matter, 
And let's say that you spend, oh, I don't know, $150 a week on something. And then somebody comes up to you and says, hey, man, I can give you that same thing for a hundred bucks. What are you going to go do? Black markets only exist because of stupid laws making something illegal or exorbitant taxes that make it cheaper for somebody else to get you the exact same thing from someplace else. It's that simple. Well, we live in a global marketplace where the only ones who benefit from draconian laws and taxation is the prison industrial complex, morticians, and the legal system employees who corral hordes of criminals to penitence for simply wanting a better, longer, happier life. I've got so much more to show you and so much more to talk about, so let's quit beating around the bush and move on to... Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here we go right before us today. Here's the first story. If you bail, you're going to miss the public service announcement. And I'm starting off with it right now because I know 30% of you take off as soon as I get done summarizing the news. Here's the most important thing. If you don't stick around for any other story, I need you to stick around for this because this is important. It might save your life. It might save somebody else's life. We talk about battery safety all the time in the vaping community. You know, if your battery's having dings, dirs, bings on them, whatever, rewrap them or replace them. I try and put that into my videos when I do reviews on stuff, but this has real life consequences. Okay. Nobody blinks an eye about it. You know, when a laptop catches fire, that's the reason they're not allowed to be in the cargo holds of airplanes, but it goes without saying these devices have the same type of batteries in them and bad things can happen when batteries get old. And they're let to go completely die. These are lithium ion batteries. They have to have a minimum charge on them. Okay. Here's what happens when you have an old device or you have a device that is let completely drained. It can catch on fire. So if you have an old battery, an old device, you need to really seriously think about why are you keeping it? You need to dispose of these batteries properly. Well, here in Indiana, Fire Association was called out this morning for an apartment fire because somebody had an old disposable vape device that they let the battery completely drain and they just let it sitting around for no reason. Well, started to vent. They threw it in the trash can, not thinking that if it's venting, it's going to be put, expelling all of that hot gases into their trash can, lit their trash can on fire, and the fire company had to go and put it out. And this is not some isolated incident. This kind of stuff happens. I, I think I looked in the statistics for it. It's like 150 times a year in the United States. So I need you guys to pay attention because here's another story just published this past week. Sprinklers stop vape pen fire in Northeast Reno before it spread. Nevada. Sprinkler system stopped the vaping pen fire on Wednesday before it got worse. And the fire department had to respond to put it out. So, battery safety. If you have any old batteries laying around, not using them anymore because they're not any good, take them and have them recycled. All right. There's places that collect these batteries and they regenerate them, recycle them, reuse the components and the chemicals inside them. Do yourself a favor. If you have an old device that you're not using, don't leave it sitting around on the shelf. And you can deactivate these things. If you have one that has sentimental value, take it apart and remove the battery. If you really want to keep the actual device, because it was the first thing that you used and it helped you quit, I understand where you're coming from. Take the time, pull out the battery so you don't have to result from being the next story in the newspaper because your device caught on fire and your house burned down on the ground. Somebody died. Moving on. 
Here we go. The vaping study that you haven't heard about and you're not going to hear about because it's not going to catch on to mainstream media. The Mayo Clinic did a population study of 78,000 patients that came in. 78,547 patients between September 15th of 2019 and November 30th of 2020. And they determined what the data shows. They took a look at it. And they found absolutely no link between e-cigarettes and COVID. So all this hysteria, mass hysteria that you see in the news and you see other people constantly repeating the same bullshit story that was based on a Stanford study of 5,300 adolescents who... How many kids do you know tell the truth, 100% of the truth, 100% of the time? Hmm? Let's, let's all be honest here, okay? Kids don't look at this like they're giving testimony in court. They throw answers out because they want to sound cool. Or they throw answers out because they think that's what the person wants to hear. But this study was done using real patients. And they documented their history and they documented pre-existing conditions. And they found out there was no link between smoking and vaping and COVID. It doesn't explain why anybody that uses nicotine or is an active smoker is underrepresented in COVID cases. However, there is no predispos predisposition for you, if you vape, that's going to increase your chances of getting COVID. And this study proves it. Moving on to San Diego University, because see, despite all the bad press and all the stance on things in California, they are going to continue doing the research and they continue doing the studies. And now they're going to be going around all the beaches to collect all the butts and all the used jewel devices. So common sense is going to tell you that what they're going to find. There's going to be a crap ton of cigarette butts out there because every time you smoke a cigarette, you have a butt. And if you're hanging out on the beach and you're the kind of person that doesn't take their trash with them when they leave, well, they're going to find a pile of them sitting there. Be a good consumer user of these products. If you're using a disposable device and dispose of it properly, just had the conversation about why with the battery safety. Well, I'm here to let you know that pretty soon there's going to be data on how many of these products are found laying around. And don't be surprised if you live in California and you see a wall of these people wearing this nice little orange vest going around picking up all these little pieces of trash because every single one, every time that they pick something up like that, it's going to be geotagged for how much of this trash is left behind by people consuming combustible and non-combustible forms of tobacco. Another study, the Intermountain Healthcare releases of another vaping study. You know what this one's about, right? This is the study that's being done and all those people in Appalachia that came down with the volley. And they're following up on the data and following up on the interviews with the patients. And they say that um, that these volley patients have um, injuries that are profound and lifelong. Lifelong consequences of their acute respiratory distress syndrome. Mm-hmm. Nice. Except they failed to mention the fact that it wasn't nicotine vaping. Not one bit has nothing to do with nicotine vaping. It has to do with them utilizing illegal, tainted, black market, THC. That's where it all comes from. That's where all this Avali stuff comes from. There are 51 million vapors using these products every single day all around the globe. Why is it if these things, like they would like you to believe, 
is supposed to be so bad for your lungs that there are scientific studies that say if you have COPD and you switch from smoking to vaping, you can reverse your COPD. So what are these people getting sick from? Hmm? Think about it. I think the reality is starting to come to the light of day. The Otero of Vaporous Community Advocacy published an article in Vape Hong Kong. It says, attacks on vaping are politically timed. Nice correlation. Yeah. Beautiful article here. There'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out. It goes to let everybody know what we already figured out. That's why it's kind of interesting that all of a sudden now, we have an Avali case in Russia. Yeah. You speak Russian? I don't speak Russian. But Google does and translated the page for me today. Vapor disease has appeared in Russia. A teenager with severe lung damage was rescued in the Moscow hospital. And the diagnosis was Avali. And this is the first case of the so-called vapor disease in Russia. Okay. Do you think this article is going to talk about what they were vaping? Or is it just going to leave it out there that they were vaping? I have no respiratory problems from vaping. Maybe it was that disease. No. Is it this device that does it? No. What were they vaping? Nobody bothers to ask the simple question. What were these people vaping? Hmm? And it's not just there. This is making a comeback. Welcome back to repeating history because people don't want to learn from it. Lexington, Kentucky. I almost died. Local college student warns against vaping. Spent eight days in the ICU. After more than two years of unexplained health issues, pneumonia, and a vaping-induced lung injury, a 21-year-old college senior said enough is enough and pleaded with those who vape to stop. What were you vaping, little missy? Huh? I guarantee you it wasn't a commercial nicotine vape. What were you vaping? You won't answer that question, will you? Because if you did... None of your hospital stay would be covered by your insurance because you were consuming an illegal product. I'm not going to harp on it. You guys know what I'm talking about. I don't need to tell you this. However, it is time that we open the conversation up and discuss what is the situation here. There are three rare side effects of cannabis consumption. So if you're consuming cannabis and you're using a vaporizing device, make sure you know what's going in there. Make sure there's nothing that's oil soluble going in there. Your body cannot take oil and break it down and completely extract it. So it has to be a water-based substance. Okay. I'm not a scientist. I don't use that kind of stuff, so I don't know the ins and outs of it. But I can tell you from a chemistry perspective, when your body tries to break down oil, it turns it into a fat and it cannot excrete fat from your lungs. However, we do need to cover this. There are three rare side effects from cannabis consumption. And I know there's plenty of people out there that are using cannabis and they're finding ways to vaporize it or whatever they do. And it's not just dry herbs. There's these wax things out there and all kinds of other stuff we don't know about because it's illegal. 
We could know about it if it was legal and brought to the sunshine, brought so that everybody knows about it. The damage is in the dosage. If it doesn't come from oil that can't be broken down your lungs, then the damage is in the dosage of it. Psychosis. For people that have a family history of psychotic disorders, it has been reported that cannabis could trigger a psychotic break. While a definitive direct cause has not yet been proven, European cities that sell high-potency marijuana, cannabis consumers were more likely to experience their first-time psychotic episode after consuming highly potent cannabis. Nausea is a frequent cannabis user. They also experience cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. For those of you not in the medical field, that's exactly what it means. Causing you to be nauseated and vomit. And it seems to be linked to recurring weed use. Probably because of the dosage. When you have something that's a normal dosage, we had this conversation last week. If you have a coffee... And it's just regular coffee that's watered down and you consume that one or two, three, four, even five a day. It's not going to have significantly adverse effects. However, if you if, however, if you were to make this coffee and then take a double shot of espresso and put it in that same fluid that's in there, well, now you're consuming a massively higher dosage of caffeine and you're going to have side effects from the extremely high dosages. And here's where the Avali comes into play. If this stuff was legalized and it was a standardized product that you could use, it would be at a dosage that was safe for you to consume and enjoy. But because everything has been relegated to the black market, you have no idea what you're getting when you get it from somebody move on the damage is in the dosage but there is legitimate purposes for medicinal cannabis i'm not going to sit here and harp on it but it is there for legitimate purposes it's the reason why it's been legalized all around the world there are people that are begging and pleading to have access to this well, in the places where it has been legalized, they are now moving forward. And here we have, coming from New Zealand, is an actual website for you to learn about medicinal cannabinoids, medicinal cannabis, medicinal marijuana. If you want to know more about it, there are websites out there that you can look into it. Medicinal cannabis with THC and CBD and endocannabinoids, we have receptors in our body that absorb it just like we have um, narcotic receptors in our body, just like we have all these other things. And there is a legitimate purpose for it. I remember seeing some of the testimony that was given before regulatory agencies where you had a mother that was begging and pleading for the government to legalize cannabis so their child wouldn't have a seizure. So their child wouldn't have to take these epilepsy medications that totally screw up your endocrine system or totally screw up your metabolism when they could simply have some cannabis and not experience a seizure. Cannabis is valid treatments for chronic pain multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, PTSD. The list could be endless. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm a DJ. Used to be a medic for 15 years. But there's legitimate purposes for this stuff being out there. It's time for us to get past the ridiculousness and talk about things for what they really are. Perfect example, the medicinal benefits of nicotine. I mean, what happened to all the studies that, that talked about all the, the benefits of 
daily consumption of nicotine. It was amazing. When the pharmaceutical industry was trying to move the nicotine gums and the patches and the lozenges from behind the pharmacy counter where you had to have a doctor's script to be able to access it or you at least had to be an adult to be able to get it, they had all kinds of marketing material that was disseminated. All kinds of the science came out about how healthy nicotine is and how it's so beneficial for certain people and how some, some people need to have it and need to have it on a regular basis. Here's the perfect example of who needs to have access to this. Do you know the people with schizophrenia have a 90%, 60 to 90% rate of smoking? Depending on where you live in the world and depending on what you've gone through, for somebody with schizophrenia, it could be a death sentence for you to find nicotine. And that could easily be absolved by utilizing an electronic cigarette that administers the nicotine without all that other harmful stuff that's created when you burn tobacco just to get nicotine. The science is out there. Why do people forget about it? History repeats itself. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check this out. If you know somebody that could benefit from this. Because I want to applaud Michelle Minton for once again publishing another beautiful article. Exposing Bloomberg's anti-tobacco meddling in developing nations with middle and low-income nations that desperately need every little bit of help they can get to improve the life of their citizens. So Bloomberg just takes up that opportunity to just go dump his millions in there so long as they follow his propaganda and his ideology. And this isn't something new. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check this one out too. Great article, but it's nothing new. Here we have in Reuters, published in 2017, he got in trouble for doing the same thing. Yeah. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. It's ridiculous. India? Mm-hmm. The tobacco epidemic, I looked at the numbers, did the math myself. The global tobacco death rate is higher than the combined death rate of tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and now, because of the number of people that have gotten vaccinated, COVID combined. You wonder why I advocate for tobacco harm reduction so hard? people's lives depend on it. Father's Day weekend, I found out that my son went back to smoking cigarettes. He knows my stance on it. He knows the science behind it. But it's so much easier to get a pack of cigarettes than it is to have harm reduction products and keep the supplies on hand that you need to keep using them. So he's back to smoking. And that's exactly what's going to happen here in Germany. The tax increases that they're putting forward right now are going to drive people back to smoking. Because it's going to be cheaper for you to smoke and combust tobacco than it is for you to use a harm reduction product. You heard my speech in the beginning. I'm not rehashing this. We talked about this once already. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you, got, you guys that are German, living in Germany right now. You got screwed. Your government's screwing you and they're giving it to you hard. I, I talked about already how much more expensive it's going to be. I understand you guys have some protests that are planned, but at this point, what are you going to do? Well, governments want their tax money. 
what it all boils down to. They don't care about public health. They don't care about how many people die. All they care about is the bottom line, where their coffers stand at the end of this whole situation. How much tax money are we bringing in? Can't possibly have anything that increases people's lives and is going to give us a much bigger tax base in the future. We're more concerned about money right now. That's exactly what's happening in Europe. Starting July 1st, every single package that originates from somebody that doesn't have the licensing and all the permits and all the requirements to collect your value added tax. Well, mainly being everybody outside of the European Union. And now because of Brexit, the UK, you're included in that group outside of the European Union. So if you're in the UK and you want to send a package to any country in Europe, well, that package is not going to be opened by customs. And whoever's getting it is going to have to pay the tax that's assessed on that product. Here's how ridiculous it is, okay? Let's say that you um, you send somebody something for 10 cents. You know, I was talking to somebody and I, I send them this little black ring that's on this glass tank. 10 cents. I send it to them as a gift. Well, they're going to have to pay tax on that. And the tax that they're going to pay on that is going to be way more than that little ring cost. No samples. No exclusions. It used to be that anything that was below 22, 23 euros was exempt. So if I send somebody just this, there's no tax added to it. Because the value of this is less than $22, 22 euros. Not anymore. It's all gone. Yep. No more exclusions. Everybody has to pay for everything that they get. Well, let's move on. Because the U.S. Customs and Border Protection in Atlanta just seized 66 boxes of vape pens in a shipment that originated in China and was destined for Georgia. What did they find inside this shipment? A bunch of counterfeit vape pens. And why did they say that they're counterfeit vape pens? Because they have no clue what the uh, FDA is doing or if these products were listed on their thing. What got their attention? Well, the fact that the packaging and the branding that was on these cardboard packages had Rick and Morty on them. And they were cracking them down, not because that they were vaping devices. They were cracking down on them and identified them as a counterfeit vaping device because of copyright infringement. Yeah. $590,000 is the retail value of these Rick and Morty copyright infringing vape pens were. Intellectual Property Rights Enforcement Program succeeded once again at stopping harm reduction products that somebody was trying to use somebody else's cartoon whatever name or whatever. It's not a legitimate seller, but I guarantee you that picture right there of the Rick and Morty pens is going to be showing up in the press all around the globe about how vape manufacturers are targeting the kids. And it has nothing to do with the kids. consequences. Here we have another wonderful article. This one was written by Lindsey Stroud. A day at the beach and the consequences of the vaping prohibition. We talked about this last week in the news, so I'm not going to hash on this. However, I want to applaud her for writing up a beautiful story about it. Putting the information out there. But I'm here to tell you it's not going to change a goddamn thing. I'm sorry. I shouldn't swear. I shouldn't use the Lord's name in vain, but it's not going to change anything. 
because here we have Ashbury Park, New Jersey. Their city council has two ordinances that they're considering right now. And the very first one is changing the ban on smoking on the boardwalk to include vaping and cannabis, regardless of how it's consumed. So nobody learned a single lesson from all the brutality that took place. Nobody learned. Nope. They aren't the only ones. Yep. Johnson City Press publishes this article saying that if you're caught vaping on public property, they're primarily talking about their park, but it's also going to be applied to all public property. So if you're walking down the sidewalk and it's owned by the city, guess what you can now get a fine for? A $50 fine for using a harm reduction product. Yeah. Why are they doing this? Well, because one of the concessions that was made at the state level when they got them to allow vape shops and all these other exclusions to continue operating and not have to face a ban that would prohibit them from selling. Well, one of the concessions was that local cities would still be able to determine where you're allowed to use the product. So here we go. If you happen to be walking down the sidewalk and want to go to the park, don't vape. Don't take your vape with you because it's a $50 fine. And you might say, that's what are you getting so excited about? It's 50 bucks. Listen, I'll pay the 50 bucks just to make a statement in the press about how this is ridiculous. And this has nothing to do with actual smoking because this is not smoke and Nobody's going to really care, pay attention, but it's a little fine. What's the big deal, right? That's how it all starts. Just one, one little thing. We'll get, we'll get to that when we get to Washington, D.C. Because here we are, the nuances of a flavored vaping debate. All explained from a European scientist. Great article. I put it on Twitter earlier today. Also put it on Facebook. Recent study from the Yale School of Public Health has suggested that banning the sale of flavored vaping products is going to cause a higher rate of cigarette smoking among teenagers. Mm-hmm. But nobody cares about that when they're passing these flavor bans. They don't care about how many people are going to be driven back to smoking because they lump harm reduction in the same boat is the actual harm producer. Uh, I don't understand if people were to simply look at the science behind it, why is there even an argument? I know somebody left a comment last week and let me know, oh, well, as soon as you realize that it's the tobacco companies that are going to make the money on it. I says, yeah, I know. I know it's the tobacco companies that are making the money on it. I know the pharmaceutical industry is making money on it. There's all kinds of people making money on it. And they're all for it. Who's standing up for the consumer? Who's standing up for the average Joe out there? The average citizen whose life depends on it. If you don't stand up for your own rights, for your own health, nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to stand up against these big corporations. They're only worried about one thing, money. That's all they care about. Well, here we have the nuances of a flavored vaping debate. There is no debate. There should be no debate on it. It's time for them to end this stupid war on vaping. Let people have the safer harm reduction product. You want to ban something? Go ban the actual cigarettes. That's actually doing the harm. Moving on. I'm getting too fired up too easily because I care about this and I care about you and I care about your health. I'm tired of these politicians just willy nilly passing these laws. 
and people are going to die because of what they're doing. Here we have Canada. I, I can't tell you how long I've been looking up to Canada, thinking to myself, oh, man, if I only lived in Canada, life would be so much better because of this or because of that or because of whatever. They're no better than we are. And it doesn't matter what part of the world you live in. This stuff is happening everywhere. The almighty dollar, the sense of profit, pushes out any logical thinking on what's best for public interest. Federal government says that it wants to ban most flavored vaping products in a bid to reduce their appeal to youth. We already talked about it, and there's already scientific studies out there proving if kids don't have access to this, they're going to go and smoke. And they might not even smoke this. They might go and smoke cannabis or marijuana. Or if you make all of it illegal, guess what's going to happen? If they still want to do it, they're going to go and do it. And then what's to stop them from, instead of picking this, picking cocaine or some type of pain pill or who knows what else because that's all their local drug dealer has I would rather somebody choose this that isn't going to hurt you and has been scientifically proven not to hurt you but they don't care about any of that they have these unrealistic ideals of how pure everybody should be in life. And it's easier just to make fun of people and chastise people for making the wrong choice. Sad. Never thought I'd see the day when Canada. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Let me finish my thoughts on Canada here. Okay. Then we'll get to this one. This really infuriated me. Washington Times. I'll never give you any of my money. And this is why. One story. That's all I looked at. And because of your greed and forcing the page to constantly reload, to reload your advertisements. Now you send me this saying, I've exceeded my limit. I've only looked at one of your articles. And now you want me to subscribe. Simply because I did my research yesterday and I let the page sit here. Minimized. And your page constantly reloaded ads all night long. How much money did you already make off of me having this page open in my browser? I don't mean to be such an angry person. If you were to meet me in person, you would find that I'm not like this. This weekly news, science, and advocacy is just the worst of me. Because I am sick and tired. And no. No that these decisions that these politicians are making are going to kill people. Canada, never thought, not in my wildest dreams that I ever think that Canada was gonna limit harm reduction products to three flavors. And I've already seen people advocating that there shouldn't be only tobacco flavor. No flavors, no mint, no menthol, just tobacco. So if somebody is smoking tobacco, they can switch to tobacco. They don't have a clue that this has no tobacco in it. And there is no such thing as a tobacco flavor. It's a bunch of other flavorings that are supposed to mimic what a tobacco is like. How do you replicate something that's on fire? What's the flavor of something on fire? Anyway. Here's the actual article. All you got to do is open up another browser that has all the cookies and stuff disabled or just reset the browser so it dumps all the cookies so it's like a brand new computer. And guess what? You can still see the article. So that's what I did. And I printed it as a PDF because I need you guys to be able to see this. This is what it all boils down to. We saw the disturbing incident of over-policing on the boardwalk in Ocean City. Just last week. Caught on video. Multiple incidents. Caught on multiple videos. Uploaded to social media. Became viral. Great. Tased this teenager. Arrested others. 
all for violation of a public smoking ban. Mm hmm. Great article. Regardless of what you think about the law's merit, the cop's draconian enforcement points to a larger problem with modern policing. Minor offenses too often escalate into dangerous and even deadly incidents. Sadly, the D.C. City Council is opening the door for such ruthless tactics in Washington, D.C. with their proposed ban on all flavored tobacco products, including vapes and menthol cigarettes. The bill, which is set for a second reading on June 29th, four days, is going to reduce the city's tax revenues. That's what they're worried about. That's their main issue. It's going to reduce the city's tax revenues and lead to smokers having further interactions with police with potentially long-term consequences for minority communities. First, on the fiscal side, the district office and the chief financial officer estimates that the ban is going to result in a $3 million loss or 13.5% of the cigarette tax revenue over the fiscal year. Forget about the tax revenue. Let's talk about the real implications for you and me as a consumer walking down the street. Okay? Let's get past that. Because it's gotten to the point now where this talk about money is just disgusting. People's lives versus the tax revenue. What's the value of a person's life? Let's move on. Because the core foundation and fundamental point of this article boils down to the fact that it's never just a simple fine. Totally dismiss the fact that you got a couple bad apples out there that went far and above and beyond what they should have done for such a minor infraction. Let's forget about that. Let's look at the fact that Washington, D.C., despite the fact on how many politicians live there and how much money they spend in their elite establishment and the restaurants and all the other places where they frequent because they're there so much. The average person that works and lives in Washington, D.C. as a resident of that city that technically isn't a part of any state, they're in the bottom, lower, middle income bracket of society. And how many of them are on the bottom? Because all they do is wait, waiter or waitress, make $2.30 an hour plus tips. What's, what's a $25 fine for them? That's a lot of money. You think that they have good mental health? You certainly know they don't have any health care. They can't afford it. Not making what they're making, less than minimum wage. So what's the impact going to be? Let's take a look at the average waiter living in D.C. Grew up in the rough neighborhood, trying to make a go of it, going to community college. Let's say that, you know, the government's paying for his community college, okay? Because of the grants and where he grew up at. How's he dealing with society and how's he dealing with life? Like most people, probably picked up a cigarette. Mm-hmm. And then he realized, I'd like to give these things up. I'm, I can't afford this. But that addiction, that need to have that cigarette, to light that cigarette up, to get your nicotine fix, is costing you more than money costing your life when you catch on to it eventually and you decide you know pick up one of these so you pick up one of these and you're just going about your day pick up your thing you feel like you want to take a toke so Ooh. get pulled over you get written a ticket here's your fine pay your fine $25 have a nice day okay 
end of the week when you get your paycheck. You're going to have the $25 to pay this? Probably not. So what's going to happen to you? You're not going to pay it. And then what's going to happen? Well, it's a minor infraction. So they're going to just assess late charges and interest and penalties. Before you know it, that $25 fine is now turned into a $500 bill. And then eventually it's going to get to the point where they're going to issue a bench warrant for you not paying this ticket. And then where are you going to end up? Thrown in jail. Because of vaping. Forget about the brutality. The inflicted damage is still the same. You're still going to end up in jail. I know. Just pay the $25 fine. Okay, yeah. This kid probably paid the $25 fine and have to skip two meals to do it. Or more. People don't have any sense of compassion or understanding to understand not everybody lives their life the same way you get to experience yours. There's so many of us that are spoiled and we don't even realize it. There's people that eat one meal a day because that's all they can afford. And they're working 60 hours a week. But that's a different topic of conversation. Let's move on to Canada once again, because here we have a Montrealer who was fined for vaping while driving. We all know around here in the States and up in Canada, it's against the law for you to use your phone while you're driving because distracted drivers cause people to die. So they passed another law. No technology devices are allowed while you're driving other than your vehicle. Okay. Problem is you have some devices that have big screens. See that the arc Fox doesn't have a very big screen is behind a matted glass surface. So that's a good thing. You could probably get away with doing this one. What happened with this guy? He had a mod like my wife's does where the whole side of the mod is a big screen. And every time you fire it, it lights up. So he got pulled over. He's like, I wasn't using my phone. He's like, I saw it light up. So guess what? He was stopped by the police officers and caught with his vape and fined for using it while he's driving. Yep. The bright screen was the problem. Even a vaping device can be a distraction at the wheel. If it has a bright screen displaying information and adjustment buttons to manipulate, the highway safety code prohibits cell phones while driving, but also using a display screen. So forget the fact that you're not looking at that disp display screen when you're using this. The guy doesn't know, so therefore, the guy has to pay the fine. Doesn't matter. Took it to court. The law is the law. Pay your fine. Yeah, here we go. Jumping back to Australia. Talked about it. We got the misinformation campaign churning along here in the States. We have the Ovali Press going on in Russia. We have the Avali press going on in Kentucky and in Queensland. This lady just does not know when to stop. Miss Richardson said, there's a no blanket approach for schools to deal with vaping. Another school administrator chastising people for using a harm reduction product, except this time, She's pointing to the fact that all these e-juices are lolly flavored vapes. She's comparing these liquids 
to a lollipop. Get with the program, lady. Adults like flavors. I love donuts. And a donut flavored e juice, well, that's my wife's favorite. It's the reason why I had to make her one. It isn't just the kids that like it. And it's kind of ironic because in Australia, none of these bottles have nicotine in them. They have to put it in there or have a pharmacist put it in there. Be a link in the description below. Because here is a PDF from the Department of Health in Queensland, Australia. One in four children live with a daily smoker. What do you think that kid's going to do when he grows up and gets of age that he can get his hands on him? You know, part of my project I started, I've been watching every, every vaping story, every vape story I could possibly get my hands on. I've been looking. When I have free time, I'll search for it, add it to the list. I've got over a hundred of them in the playlist. A hundred of you, I've watched your story on how you quit smoking by picking up a vape. You know how many of them are stories about people that grew up in a home with a smoker and started at the age of 10, 12, 14, 16? You guys know the truth because it's your story. Moving on. Because this is where it's all ending up. All these restrictive regulations and taxations and bans. It's not going to stop people from wanting what they want. In the states where they've made this illegal, people have started to make their own. They'll drive to a neighboring state where they can get what they need. And they'll buy it. Or they'll simply buy the ingredients to make their own. The only real thing that they have to be able to access to make their own is liquid nicotine. So as long as that is still available on the market, vapors always have the opportunity to vape if they choose to. You know, something else is going to happen. You're going to have a massive black market. Because everything that's legal and legit now moves underground. Except now, rather than things being made on an industrial scale, using vats that are thousands of gallons in size, when they mix a batch of e-liquid, it's now being done by the gallon or by the bottle. And hope you don't have somebody that's trying to just simply take advantage of an opportunity without actually using the stuff themselves. Because that's what's going on with all these other illegal drugs. They buy the legitimate stuff and then they cut it so that they can make a bigger profit margin. What do you think is going to happen? Fortunately, this stuff is cheap as dirt and there's no way you can make more money by cutting it because there's nothing to cut it with. What are you going to cut it with? Water? But the black market is something that's definitely going to grow and you're going to see even more of it. Which countries have the biggest black markets? Well, according to this, Greece has the highest black market. Except, see, there's a little problem here. What you don't see unless you actually read this whole thing is you find out that that's 21% of their gross domestic product. We could easily get into why Greece has such a high black market. But I'm just going to use the United States since that's where I'm at right now as an example. Notice how it's at the bottom of the list, 5.4%. Except you need to factor in the gross domestic product of the country. So let's do that. What's the gross domestic product of the United States? Well, in 2020, it's $20.93 trillion. Trillion. 
I don't think any of us truly have the ability to picture trillion dollars, let alone 21 trillion dollars. But let's figure out 5% of 20 trillion dollars is still a trillion dollars. You think that that's just going to disappear? Oh, wait a minute. The only reason it exists is because of these laws making things illegal or so expensive that people are going to buy them on the black market without any guarantee of it being legitimate. Mm hmm. There's all, all kinds of articles written about how to understand the black market. Where does it come from? What types are there? How does it funded? How does money move? Digital currencies and talking about all that other stuff. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's, when it comes to this, it's not that. It's literally one guy in his garage mixing it up. Well, time's to fight. You have to fight. You have to fight before the legislations are passed that make it illegal. Trying to fight for something to be reversed after it goes into effect, it's too late. People need to wake up and, and take a more active role to fight for their rights. You wouldn't think that health is something you would have to fight for. But we obviously do. Well, here we have a story. United Arab Emirates. Told you we're going all around the world this week. Vaping retailers are urged to step up efforts to fight the illicit trade and block sales to minors. Yep. Except, see, here's a little problem. Even if all the retailers in these Arab countries do the right thing, when the powers to be decide that they want to take this out, they don't need to tell the truth. They can fight it with misinformation. They could fight it with pictures from the black market for illegal items that people are only doing to make money in the face of adversity. I'm not telling you that's not that's not a reason for you not to do the right thing. It is is for it, you guys have to do the right thing. Everybody has to do the right thing. Just like I, I I read an article earlier today about how retailers really need to crack down and only sell to adults. Well, just like we found out last week, it only takes a couple rotten apples to spoil the barrel for everybody. Sorry, didn't mean for this to turn into uh, another ranty episode. Because here we have the Malaysian Reserve publishing the article, Relics Pledges to Address Concerns in the Vape Industry. And actually, this comes to the same conversation that I've had with somebody else earlier this week about how years ago, there's a couple manufacturers that decided they were going to be able to put into these devices chips that actually track where they're at. And just like how you have, you know, USB keys that allow you to use certain software and you have to use the key in order to access the machine, they were going to do the same kind of thing with these devices. But... They've never materialized with that. Well, here you go. Relics is pushing the same technology now. They're going to be able to sell these devices and send them out. And you as an adult need to verify you're an adult to get the, the, the device to function. Like I said in my summary, this is more like anti-counterfeit measures than it is teen misuse prevention but from the years that I did do and have done technology work IT work I'm here to tell you there isn't a 
anti-counterfeit method that hasn't been broken. And if somebody truly wants to do something, they're going to do it. I don't care how many steps you instill to force people to do the right thing. People want to misuse something. We'll always find a way to misuse it. Maybe that's the reason why this technology never got thrown into our devices. I mean, I do have a fingerprint, an OBS cube with the fingerprint reader on it. If you're worried about your kid accessing it, I mean, that'd be perfect. You just, it only works with your fingertip, your fingerprint. There's technology solutions out there, but the problem is the people that are fighting against harm reduction products, they don't care if it was on there or not. They'll use whatever story they have to, to accomplish their goal. So let's move forward and let's take a look at some success stories. And naturally, when we talk about success stories with harm reduction products, we have to look at England because Public Health England knows the benefit of this and is advocating for it and has the government of England putting out these disinformation fires with literally billboards and bus stop posters telling people not to believe the gossip papers do what's good for your health and this is safer and healthier than smoking. So here we go. They actually did the studies and analyzed it. And they took a look at different districts and different cities and they analyzed what is the quit rate? Where is this stuff working and where is this stuff not working? They're truly working towards their smoke-free goal. And they'll be one of the first ones to achieve it. I mean, except for Sweden, but that's a different reason. Increased quit rates. Couldn't have come at a better time. Interesting. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Because I want to move on. This one's a real quick one. The incendiary rise of Jewel is now going to be coming to a Netflix account near you. They're going to be producing a docuseries based on the book. And I'm looking forward to watching it. Some fun things to do. Something I ought to start getting into i finally got everything set up in here to do it i got some clamps i got the wires i got everything i'm gonna do some tutorials on how to make your own coils time for the crafting aspect of vaping to occupy a little more of my time and less of this advocacy stuff that sometimes i wonder am i just spinning tire for no beneficial result I'm not going to stop advocating. I'm not going to stop doing my tweets and whatnot. I'm not stopping this weekly news report. I don't care if there's only one person watching it a week. The information has to get out there. But moving on to some interesting information here. Wouldn't it be interesting if you could, we talked about this device, you know, verifying that you're an adult. Wouldn't it be nice if you had to have some prerequisite knowledge before you were allowed to have this? <clears throat> People don't think anything twice about having to have a driver's license before you get into a vehicle and drive it. But you got to learn. You got to put your training wheels on. So I love coming across articles like this, especially because this one seems to be written by somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Might actually be a vapor. Not just some lifestyle article that was written by somebody to fill the void in their publication. What is a vape coil? Well, obviously, it's what makes the liquid become aerosolized. And why is it that you need to learn Ohm's Law? Well, because you need to have things that are compatible with your device and your battery combination. Anytime you worry about electricity, you have to complete the electrical pathway. And in the electrical pathway between the one end of the battery and the other end of the battery, you have a coil. You have regulations that take place on how much voltage is applied there 
in the fancy devices and the mech mods it's literally a straight circuit between the one end of the battery and the coil and the other end of the coil and the other end of the battery you guys know all this i'll put a link in the description below you can check it out it was refreshing to see something that was actually written with truth not some made up thing so if this guy's not an actual vapor then, well, he did his homework for publishing this. And here we've reached our final conclusion for this week. This has already turned into something way longer than I wanted it to be. I do apologize. I'm going to try and edit it down as much as possible. Looking at the, the clock where it had... Hour and 45 minutes, I've been sitting here talking and talking and talking about this and that. It's just... This week, I started doing the research like I normally do on Wednesday, and I found a couple articles, and then Thursday, and then Friday, you know, spend a little bit of time so I don't have to sit in this chair all day long just doing one video, one report for you guys. But there was so much news available this week about all different aspects of vaping, all different parts of the world, and it's all turning into something that is relatively predictable. Like the piece that we had saw posted earlier, and it tells us this is all being politically timed. There's a misinformation campaign out there that is being funded by numerous sources. The one we pick on all the time is Bloomberg because it's the easiest one to say, you as an individual are responsible for the damage that this misinformation campaign is causing. And we all know the pharmaceutical in industry has interest involved. And the tobacco industry has interest involved. They're, they have the power to do it, but they're not going to stand up and support things, number one. And if they do, and, you know, they're tied to it at all, all of a sudden everybody disbelieves anything that they have anything to do with anyway. And second off, they have a financial interest, a vested interest in letting this industry get to the point where it's just nothing but a smoldering set of embers because then they can come in and take over and the whole thing is all theirs. It's a monopoly. It's all about having the most money and the most power and the more, most influence. I think Bloomberg has the same problem. But this is what it boils down to. And this is why I keep doing this every week. Because when you want to smoke, this is exactly what you'd be willing to do. When you want that cigarette, if you can't find that cigarette, you will do whatever it takes to be able to smoke. I had half a dozen stories that you guys told me about in your quit story, your vape story, where you did this. You would go to ashtrays when you didn't have anything, and you would re-smoke half-lit cigarettes. Or you would know that you have one pack to last you so many days. So you would take a couple drags on it. You would put it out. The worst thing, the worst flavor is a cigarette that was lit and let set in that ashtray overnight. And then you'd wake up the next day and take another puff. Nothing tastes as disgusting as that. But we did it when we were smokers. The other day, I was outside trying to fix my mom's car. She bumped up against a pole in the gas station and busted the little mounts for the headlights on the car. So we ordered the parts for it. I'm working on trying to get it redone. I ordered a fender and a bumper, and I realized, man, to change this headlight out, I literally got to remove the whole front clip of the car, change it out. So rather than doing it all at once, knowing that I got rain coming tonight and tomorrow, I just fixed what was there. I just replaced the headlight and then put everything back together. I was kind of surprised to find out. Went out in the morning, had my cup of coffee, and I went outside and started working. And it worked. And I worked on the car. And you literally have to take off like 100 screws and another 100 plastic little pluggy things you have to remove to tear into this just to get to the three screws that hold that headlight in. It took me all day tearing the thing apart, putting a new headlight in, putting it all back together, 
before I was done. I came in in the middle of the day for another cup of coffee. And because I left my vape up here in the studio, I just went back to work. The whole day. I went a whole day. Did not miss not having my vape. It's amazing. This is what harm reduction has the potential to do for every smoker that's out there. How do you get people to understand and believe this? Unless they've experienced it themselves firsthand, <laughs> there's no way to explain it. Anyway, I'm just rambling on at this point. Maybe I'm going to take up the, somebody left me a comment the other day asking for me to do a vlog where I did just a bunch of miscellaneous things. I got a trip I made to a local vape shop that I still haven't published yet. I got the film for it. I think that's what I'm going to work on this weekend, throw a vlog up for you guys. I'm also going to do the TFV18 RBA. I haven't done it yet because I filled this thing up the other day and just forget. Anyway, for those of you still watching, I know it's a minority of the people I have on this channel, but I truly appreciate you guys watching and sticking around. I'm going to throw together something this week in the vlog, and I'm going to get this RBA reviewed, and I'm going to move on. I got a Steam Crave product I've been dying for, the Titan with the PWM. I'm going to be doing that review next, and... Time for us to actually enjoy some of this and focus on the crafting aspect of vaping. Something more fun and positive than all this news and malarkey that's out there. Anyway, I appreciate you guys sticking around as far as you did and as long as you did. And I'll be back for another review, another video, or another vaping news science and advocacy report in the very near future. Hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. And remember, all you need, peace, love, and a hunky vape to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco.